Science is the thing that's going to lead us forward into the new era, where we can all just sit back and relax while drones and algorithms take care of all the hard work. But we're still a long way from that dream, and part of the reason might be that scientists have a habit of getting things wrong. From the prison experiment that was just a little unethical, to say the least, to the study that traumatized children, here's 20 science experiments that went horribly wrong. <sighs> Number 20. Stanford Prison Experiment In 1971, social psychologist Philip Zimbardo wanted to figure out how people fit into social roles. Well, that sounds pretty reasonable, right? He had a group of male college students live in a mock prison for two weeks as prisoners and guards as a part of an experiment. Okay, I guess prison is something we could all do with understanding better, sure. But after choosing his test subjects, Zimbardo assigned them their actual roles without telling them who were guards and who were prisoners. He then surprised the prisoners by arresting them outside their own homes. The results were bad. These normal college students became viciously sadistic guards or spineless and getting more and more terrified all the time prisoners, becoming way too deeply involved in their roles. Zimbardo had to cut the experiment short after only six days because the prison was so upsetting. People have said that this was one of the most unethical psychological experiments ever done. Because of the harm done to the participants, universities all over the world changed their ethic rules for using people as test subjects to keep other students from being hurt in this same way. Because of these limitations, it's been hard for other researchers to repeat the study. When news came out in March of 2004 about the and abuse of prisoners at Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq, Zimbardo was shocked by how similar it was to his own experiment. He was upset that the military and government officials put the blame for torture and abuse at the Abu Ghraib American military prison on a few bad apples, instead of admitting that there might be problems with the way the military holds prisoners in general. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. This scientist decided it would be fascinating to find out what would happen if you didn't blink for three days. So he rigged up a kind of eye brace that held his eyes open for 72 hours and had another scientist put drops in occasionally to stop his eyes from drying out. He stopped blinking for three days. Here's what happened after. He wondered if we could do something useful with all the time that we'd save by never blinking again. But guess what? He went blind. What a disaster. Do you think this was the stupidest experiment of all time? What would you do if you had a few extra minutes saved by never blinking again? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. And now on to the next topic. Number 19, the monster study. Dr. Wendell Johnson, a speech pathologist, conducted the monster study to find out more about why children stutter. Yeah, the monster study. You already know this one's not gonna be good. Johnson wanted to find out if stuttering was caused by learning behavior or by biology. However, the study had a lot of ethical problems. For the study, Johnson chose 22 orphans to take part. Some of the orphans had trouble talking. It's not unusual for young children to stutter, but then just get over it on their own without treatment. On the other hand, some of the orphans didn't stutter and were perfectly fine when they spoke. For five months, Johnson's team met with the kids every few weeks to evaluate how they spoke. He put them in two mixed groups. Children in the normal group were complimented on how well they spoke, even if they stuttered or had a hard time speaking. People told the kids in the stuttering group that they spoke badly, mocked and insulted them, even if they were, in fact, not stutterers to begin with. The researchers' praise didn't have much of an effect on the normal children group. Only one of the stuttering children got better in this group. The stuttering group did much worse than the other group. Don't forget that not all of these kids actually stuttered. They were just told that they did. Five of the six children who were wrongfully scolded for their speech ended up developing speech problems that they didn't have in the first place. These kids also became shy, and one of them even stopped talking completely. Some of these kids were as young as five years old. This trauma lasted their whole lives. 
Number 18. MK Ultra. At the beginning of the Cold War, the CIA thought that the communists had found a or a method that would let them control people's minds. In response, the CIA started a secret project called MK Ultra to find a that could be used as a weapon to control the minds of enemies. From the 1950s until the early 1960s, MK Ultra was run by a chemist named Sidney Gottlieb. It was the most sustained search in history for techniques of mind control. In the end, Gottlieb decided that it wasn't possible to control someone's mind. But not before he a lot of people and set off a whole lot of psychological disorders in people after opening their skulls and putting electricity in their brains to try to control them. It would basically be impossible to fit everything here, but MK Ultra is probably the worst thing the US government has ever done. And that's saying a lot! Number 17. Elephant on LSD. A three-ton bull Asian elephant named Tusco was used in the biggest and most controversial drug test on animals ever. In 1962, Dr. Louis Jolin Jolly West and two others carried out the experiment at the University of Oklahoma. West wanted to see if LSD, which wasn't popular as a recreational would make Tusco go into must. During must, a bull elephant's testosterone levels rise and it becomes very aggressive. All bull elephants do this naturally. It's not clear why West would have been interested in this, but he's been linked again and again to the CIA's MKUltra program that we just looked at, which had been testing LSD on people since 1953. Tusco, who was called the prize of the Oklahoma City Zoo, was given 297 milligrams of LSD, which is a lot for an elephant, and more than 30 times what a person could handle. After five minutes, Tusco blew a loud trumpet, fell over, pooped, and started violently shivering. His pupils got bigger, his legs got stiff, he bit the tip of his tongue off, and he had a hard time breathing. 20 minutes later, the elephant was injected with a large amount, again, almost certainly too large, of the antipsychotic Thorazine in an attempt to calm him down. This probably lowered his blood pressure a lot and made his heart beat very fast. It didn't help in any way. After an hour, Wes pumped a tranquilizer into Tusco, and a few minutes later, all because some crazy scientists were trying to get attention by doing a horrible publicity stunt. Number 16, the Milgram Experiment. Theories that the Nazis mass murder during Two was due to the German people's willingness to blindly obey commands, Stanley Milgram decided to conduct an experiment to test this hypothesis. And this is one of the most notorious insights into how any regular person can become an inhumane in a matter of minutes. To choose who would be the learner and who would be the teacher, participants drew lots. Each participant was always secretly assigned to be the teacher, while one of Milgram's henchmen pretending to be a real participant served as the learner. The learner, who was only ever referred to as Mr. Wallace, was isolated in a room and had electrodes attached to his arms. An electric shock generator with a series of switches, ranging from light shock to 450 volts and were in the room adjacent to where the teacher and the scientist were. Having seen the learner memorize a set of word pairings, the teacher now puts the learner, who's bound to a chair, through an exam by saying a word and asking him to choose its match from a set of four choices. Teachers were instructed to administer increasingly powerful electric shocks to learners who made mistakes, which they did on purpose to ensure the test's validity. The shocks were fake, but the teacher role didn't know this, and the learner, a skilled actor, gave a very convincing performance of extreme pain. 65% of those who participated went all the way up to the potentially lethal 450 volts of punishment. There was not a single person who stopped before reaching a horrifically painful 300 volts. We know no one was physically harmed in the experiment, but we learned a lot about how people's empathy and critical thinking skills diminish in the presence of a man in a white coat telling them what to do in the name of science or reason. Number 15. Chernobyl Disaster The Chernobyl catastrophe was a nuclear accident that happened on April 26 of 1986 at the number 4 reactor of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant near the city of Pripyat in the Ukrainian SSR of the Soviet Union. 
It was the most costly and the most people of any nuclear disaster in history. It's one of only two nuclear disasters to get a 7 on the International Nuclear Event Scale. The other was Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster in 2011. Over 500,000 people were needed for the initial emergency response, and cleaning up the area afterward cost an estimated 18 billion Soviet rubles, which adjusted for inflation is about $68 billion in today's money. The disaster happened when an RBMK-type nuclear reactor was being tested for safety. The test was a simulation of a power outage to help come up with a safety plan to keep the flow of water cooling the reactor going, until backup generators could turn the power on again. During the planned decrease in power to get ready for the electrical test, the reactor's power suddenly dropped to almost nothing. The operators were only able to bring back a small amount of the test power, which made the reactor unstable. The operators did the electrical test even though the danger wasn't mentioned in the operating instructions. Once the test was over, the operators tried to shut down the reactor, but a combination of unstable conditions and problems with the way the reactor was built led to an uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction. Number 14. Pit of Despair during the 1950s and 1960s, Harry Harlow made a number of studies on how racist monkeys bond with each other. Harlow took baby monkeys and put them in separate rooms from the time that they were born. He did this to some for three months, to others for six, to others for nine, and to others again for their entire first year of life. Then, to see what would happen, he then put them back with the other monkeys who had grown up normally. The results showed that the monkeys did weird things, like gripping their own bodies and rocking over and over again. At first, the babies were scared of the other monkeys, but then they started to treat them badly. The other monkeys picked on them. They hurt themselves by ripping out their own hair, scratching, and biting their arms and legs. Harlow came to the conclusion that never forming a bond of attachment is bad for life, or monkeys anyway. But even though these tests seem cruel, they could be seen as a way to show how important emotional care is in places like hospitals, children's homes, and daycare centers. And also, it was super cruel. Number 13, the third wave. Similar to the Milgram experiment, the third wave was an experiment from 1967 that looked at how fascism can spread even in democratic societies. Woo, 1967, wait until you see what's in store later on in the 2000s. Using a group of high school students, the experimenter set up a way for some of them to be seen as part of a high status group. The students were soon willing to take part in bad things, like excluding and ostracizing people who weren't in their top group. Even scarier, this behavior was carried on outside of the classroom with great enthusiasm. After only four days, the experiment was stopped because it was getting out of hand. But it shows again the dangers of power. Number 12. David Raymer in 1966, when David Raymer was eight months old, he was circumcised, but the procedure went wrong and his penis was damaged. John Mooney, a psychologist, said that baby David should be given a sex change and raised as a girl. The parents agreed, but they didn't know that Mooney wanted to use David in a secret experiment to prove that gender identity isn't something you're born with, but rather something that is shaped by nature and upbringing. David was given the name Brenda, had surgery to give him a vagina, and was given hormone supplements, but the experiment went horribly wrong. As a child, Brenda behaved like a typical boy, and the Raymer family began to fall apart. By the time Raymer was 13, he was depressed to the point of wanting to He told his parents that he would if they made him go and see Dr. Money again. Raymer's parents finally told him the truth about his gender change after his endocrinologist and psychiatrist told them to do so. At age 14, after his father told him about his past, Raymer decided to become a boy and started calling himself David. He got treatment like testosterone injections, a double mastectomy, and phalloplasty surgeries to fix the problem. But his life was already destroyed by a cruel psychologist, and he when he was 38 years old. Number 11, Willowbrook State School Hepatitis Tests. Dr. Saul Krugman did some very disturbing experiments at Willowbrook State School in Staten Island. He gave hepatitis to children with mental disabilities intentionally. 
and then watched how the disease spread for scientific research. The study started in 1956 and lasted for 14 years. Even worse, parents were often told that their children could get in if they agreed to have hepatitis experiments done on them instead of paying high entrance fees. The researchers said that the work was totally fine because they would give the kids injections to fight the hepatitis after causing it on purpose. They also said that since plenty of people already had hepatitis, causing it on purpose shouldn't be judged too harshly. That's some pretty strange thinking, that's for sure. After, many experts weighed in and gave their thoughts, including reasons why the work should be criticized or defended. But it seems like defending the act of giving a terrible disease to mentally disabled children, just to see what would happen, would be pretty tough to defend. That's, that's messed up. Number 10. Castle Bravo Nuclear Disaster U.S. military authorities began planning for future nuclear weapons testing in November of 1945, just a few months after the conclusion of II and the dropping of atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The A-bombs were initially detonated in a distant location that few Americans would be familiar with. Bikini Atoll was located in the center of the Pacific Ocean and was a part of the Greater Marshall Islands Group. It was a cluster of coral islets no bigger than two square miles at most. Commodore Ben H. Wyatt, the military administrator of the Marshall Islands, visited Bikini Atoll in February of 1946 to inform the locals that they'd have to evacuate the area. Wyatt informed them they had to undertake the experiments to prevent future wars. It was clear that the locals were miserable and bewildered by this news. And can you blame them? The leader of the people, King Judah, eventually spoke up. We will go, believing that God is in charge of everything. However, the devil himself showed up, and he's the one that appeared to be in control. The little atoll would rapidly become one of the world's most infamous hotspots, literally. French fashion designer Christian Lacroix was inspired by its fame and created a swimsuit with the same name. That's where the word bikini comes from. The United States dropped 23 atomic bombs on Bikini Atoll between 1946 and 1958. Hydrogen bombs made up 20 of them. One such case is the March 1, 1954 H-bomb test at Castle Bravo. Needless to say, it was not safe for King Judah and his people to return to their home, since its yield of 15 megatons was 1,000 times greater than the atomic bomb that devastated Nagasaki in 1945. And yet, the U.S. government let them return in the 1970s before deciding to evacuate them once more after severe radiation sickness began hitting the unfortunate islanders. Number 9. African Clawed Frog Pregnancy Tests In the past, researchers found a way to tell if a woman was pregnant by feeding her urine to African clawed frogs. I'm sure the frogs enjoyed that bit. <laughs> Not. Anyway, if the frog laid eggs, the woman was pregnant. In the 1940s and 1950s, this method was pretty popular. But when better ways of doing things came along, many of the frogs, which were originally from sub-Saharan Africa, were let out of labs. And this led to multiple problems with invasive species and the spread of diseases. The strange amphibian species lives in water and is both a predator and a serious disease carrier. African clawed frogs are now found in a number of U.S. states, and their offspring can be found in the U.K., the Netherlands, and Germany, which seem like strange places for them to live because of their cold climate. The chytrid fungus, which kills many native amphibians and is carried by these frogs, is a sad byproduct of the pregnancy tests that use the frogs. The release of clawed frogs is one reason why native amphibian populations are declining. The problem is made worse by the fact that the frogs seem to be immune to the disease, which makes them very dangerous vectors. Number 8. Cornelius, the crazed cancer researcher. Before he got into trouble, Dr. Cornelius Rhodes, a pathologist who went to Harvard, was one of the most respected cancer researchers of the 20th century. The Cornelius Rhodes Award, which is the most prestigious award given to scientists by the American Association for Cancer Research, is named after this researcher. This was before a doctor in Puerto Rico accused him of intentionally giving cancer to patients there. 
In a handwritten letter, Dr. Rhodes wrote that the people of Puerto Rico are without a doubt the dirtiest, laziest, most degenerate, and thieving race of men ever to live on the globe. This island doesn't need public health work. It needs a tidal wave that will kill everyone on it. Oh my god, this guy was literally human garbage. Just the sort of doctor that you want in charge of global health initiatives. As a result of the experiments, this doctor, who was once praised for his work, countless Puerto Ricans. This was all done at the expense of innocent people who were afflicted with a terrifying disease and was a result of some especially horrible, unethical research based on race. Because of this, thank God, Rhodes Metal was renamed in 2003. Number 7. Project Storm Fury We all know the weather can change quickly, but you can't always blame the weatherman scientists might just be responsible for this too. Project Storm Fury was a test in the US of ice crystals that were supposed to stop storms. However, the crystals didn't work, and hurricanes continued to kill a lot of people. Between 1962 and 1983, the US government flew planes full of silver iodide right into hurricanes and dumped the iodide onto them. This was supposed to cause supercooled water inside the hurricane to freeze, which would break it up and mess up its weather structure. In the years that followed, it was found that there wasn't enough supercooled water in a hurricane for all of this planned storm disruption to ever actually work. Despite the project's failure to reduce hurricane devastation, its observational data and storm life cycle study have improved meteorologists' capacity to predict hurricane movement and severity. And since 1971? Well, they just claim they never took any further interest in changing the weather for any reason. So, I guess we'll just believe them, right? Number 6. Winthrop Kellogg's Ape Experiment Winthrop Niles Kellogg and his wife moved a female chimpanzee named Gua into their Florida home when their son, Donald, was 10 months old. Their goal was to find out what Donald and Gua would be like if they were treated exactly the same in every way. The chimpanzee wore napkins and then rompers to make it look like a baby. She was pushed around in a carriage, sat in a high chair, slept in a bed, and was kissed goodnight. No special effort was made to teach Gua amazing tricks. Instead, she was taught things that a loving parent would do with a baby girl. Observations, films, and tests were made every day for nine months as part of the experiment, which was done with great care. Early on, the chimp learned faster than the boy, but by the end of the experiment, it was clear that she was falling behind, especially in terms of intellectual adaptation to human demands, which isn't surprising, obviously. The early superiority was because, in general, anthropoids grow up faster than humans do. Monkeys reach puberty at around the age of 4, while most people do so between the ages of 12 and 14, with girls reaching puberty before boys. So we really didn't learn much from this other than that chimps are not humans. Number 5. Franz Reichelt's Aviator Suit He only wanted to make one thing. A parachute suit that worked, but he found out the hard way that even a simple dream can turn deadly when you're only a tailor with technology from the early 20th century. Around the summer of 1910, Franz Reichelt began to test his parachute suit. Early on, he had some success with a suit that had wings and was supposed to be able to carry a heavy dummy from the fifth floor to the ground with a soft landing. The Aero Club de France had offered a reward to anyone who could come up with a better design for a parachute, and Reichelt Reichelt was sure that he had done it. In 1912, he planned to jump off the first deck of the Eiffel Tower, which is more than 180 feet high, to show just how well his suit worked. It was a cold morning. Reichelt put a stool on the table to help him get over the guardrail, and then got ready to jump, as can be seen in this grainy video from that time. He stood on the edge for more than 40 agonizing seconds before jumping off. Reichelt's suit didn't work, and it seemed to wrap around him and get tangled up, turning him into a torpedo. He fell straight down and died on the spot. Number 4. Biosphere 2 Disaster Eight scientists locked themselves in a 3.14-acre building in the early 1990s to simulate life on another planet. Biosphere 2 was a well-known experiment that cost about $200 million. One of the scientists who worked on it said that its goals were to educate, develop eco-technologies, and find out how well our eco-laboratory worked. It was like something out of a science fiction movie, and it had never been done on such a large scale before. 
But the scientists ran into a number of problems that made it impossible for them to continue the experiment. These problems included a lack of sunlight that hurt the crops, an infestation of cockroaches, an injured crew member who had to leave for treatment, and not enough oxygen. Which still all sounds like a space movie to me, especially if they were giant man-eating cockroaches. Number 3. Duncan McDougall's Soul Experiments Duncan McDougall did test on recently people and dogs in 1901 to find out if their body weight changed right after they died. He thought that a drop in weight could show that a physical soul had left the body. He weighed six people before and after they died to test this theory. He found out that there was a weight difference of between half an ounce and one and a half ounces. He did the exact same test on dogs and found no difference. According to McDougall's reasoning, this means dogs don't have souls. Ha! Huh, talk about tell me you don't have a dog without telling me you don't have a dog. The other scientists have had problems with this experiment from the start, pointing out things like the small size of the sample and the fact that the measurements were not very accurate. The experiment was flawed because the methods used were not reliable. The sample size was way too small, and the ability to measure changes in weight was not accurate enough. But it gets better. Critics pointed out that the worst thing is that McDougall poisoned and 15 healthy dogs to support his wacky research, which of course, in the end, proved absolutely nothing. Number 2. Marie Curie Fate with Radiation Marie Curie, who is known as the mother of modern physics, died of aplasmic anemia, which is a rare disease caused by too much exposure to the radioactive elements plutonium and radium, which she discovered. Curie was the first and only woman to win a Nobel Prize in two different fields, physics and chemistry. She continued the work of French physicist Henri Becquerel, who in 1896 found that uranium gives off rays. In 1898, Marie and Pierre Curie, a French physicist who was also her husband, found a new radioactive element. They called it polonium after Marie's home country of Poland. Many of Curie's possessions, like her clothes, furniture, cookbooks, and lab notes, are still radioactive after more than 100 years. Her body was also radioactive, so it was put in a coffin with almost an inch of lead on the inside. The Curie family is buried in France's Pantheon, which is a tomb in Paris that holds the bodies of famous French people like Rousseau and Voltaire. We owe her a lot. She was a real heroine of science, but her love of science sadly killed her. Number 1. The Sloten Accident in 1942, physicist Louis Sloton was asked to join the Top Secret Manhattan Project. Once involved, he made tests with uranium and plutonium cores to find out what their critical mass values were. After World War II, he went to the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico to do more nuclear research. On May 21st of 1946, he started a fission reaction by accident, which let out a burst of hard radiation. He was taken to the hospital immediately, but he died there nine days later. After Harry Doglian, who died from radiation from the same demon core that Sloten, Sloten became the second person in history to die in a criticality accident. And yep, this evil ball of plutonium was literally called the demon core. The US government called Sloten a hero because he acted quickly enough to save the lives of his colleagues. But on the other hand, some physicists say that Sloten's actions before the accident were dangerous and that his death could have been avoided. Do you think these experiments were worth trying out? Does science sometimes go too far? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.